الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على رسوله وعلى الأمة الميامين من آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعن أعداءهم Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I'd like to welcome you all back to yet another segment of our discussion in the rulings of fasting, in the rulings of salm. There are nine specific acts or actions which invalidate any particular fast. So any fast is actually invalidated or deemed void if one undertakes one of any of these nine specific actions. Number one, eating or drinking. Number two, sexual intercourse. Number three, masturbation. Number four, ascribing false things to Allah and the Ahlul Bayt alayhum Number five, purposely swallowing thick dust or smoke. Number six, immensing one's head completely into water. Number seven, remaining in the state of janaba or hayd or nifas until fajr, from the night until fajr. Number Eight, vomiting by purpose, forcing oneself to throw up. And number nine, enema with liquid, which I will explain all in further detail, inshallah, as we proceed in our discussion. Now let's discuss the aspect number one, which is the eating and drinking. If a person intentionally, while being conscious of his fast, eats or drinks, his during the day in Shah Ramadan or any fast, his fast is deemed invalid or void. Irrespective of whether that which he ate or drank was usually eaten or drink or drunk, for example, if he is to eat bread or water, eat bread or drink water, or if he is to eat, for example, dirt and drink, for example, car oil, it doesn't matter what it was that he ate or drank, anything that passes the throat is deemed eating and drinking and invalidates your fast, no matter even the amount consumed. So it could be a speck of, of, of dirt, or it could be a single milliliter or a drop of, of any sort of liquid. If while eating and drinking, one realizes that it is, time of, it is the time of Fajr, dawn, he or she should stop eating immediately and remove the food or whatever is left inside their mouth and be sure not to swallow any of it anymore so that they do not ruin their fast for the coming day. If a person whilst fasting eats or drinks forgetfully, which happens on many occasions, someone's fasting, he's very thirsty, he sees a, a, a bottle of water or a, or, a, or a jug of water and drinks forgetfully, only to realize five or six or ten minutes after that I've actually once read a narration which says it's a present from the Imam, or it's a gift from the Imam. Yeah, it's a get out, get out of jail free pass. If one eats or drinks forgetfully, only today to remember his fast is still deemed valid because he was nasty, he was forgetful. It was not through purpose. There are no objections to any injections of anesthetic or the like in any particular limb used for any purpose whilst one is observing a fast. However, it is preferred to avoid injections with the use and the purpose of anything other than medication. So medications are deemed fine through the uh, form of an injection, although it is recommended to abstain from any of the above. If a person fasting intentionally swallows any food particles that remain in between his teeth or in his mouth throughout the day from the last meal, the night before for example, his fast is deemed invalid. Why? Because his swallowing was purpose, purposeful. If it was out of, um, for example, forgetfulness or it was not purpose, it wasn't meant, then there is no issue with that. If he can, it's actually better if he could uh, remove it. Swallowing saliva does not invalidate the fast. The saliva which builds up in one's mouth does not invalidate the fast. And there is no harm in swallowing one's phlegm or mucus, so long as it's inside the throat. If it comes out on, onto the tongue or into the mouth, out of obligatory precaution, it is recommended not to swallow it, actually recommended to remove it from one's mouth. Now this ruling is for the fantastic brothers and sisters who do all the cooking for us, 
the fasting and actually slave away preparing meals, even though it is maybe uh, very hard because the smells and the aromas throughout the day for the fasting brothers and sisters to break their fast at night. Often we are asked that food is either too salty or too bland or too spicy because those cooking, the mothers, the sisters, the brothers, anyone, was not able to taste the food whilst cooking. When tasting food, generally it stays on the tongue or inside the mouth. It does not go into the back of the throat. However, if somebody knows that if he tastes the food, it is going to go into his throat, it is impermissible for him to taste the food. But if he knows that through tasting it will just stay on his tongue and then he can remove it after tasting the food, remove the food in all its particles and aspects, there is no issue with tasting the food. If one knows beforehand that the food they are tasting will reach his throat, then his fast will be deemed invalid because he purposely put the food or the drink or whatever it is into his mouth and he should perform its qadha, its makeup and pay a kafara. A kafara being either the freeing of a slave or the fasting of two months or the feeding of 60 needy people, which is what we call kafara kabira, the large kafara of purposely breaking one's fast. Finally, if a person is unable to fast due to weakness or illness of any sort, to the extent that it is unbearable for him to fast. It's not to the extent, for example, that I get dizzy if I fast, or if I fast, you know, um, for example, I get bad breath, or if I fast, you know, I don't feel right. The only way one can break his fast whilst during the, during the month of Shah Ramadan is if this person is unable to fast. It is physically harming this person or his health, or fasting is, is, is harming this person or his health. And therefore, it is, there is no issue with breaking one's fast. And in some cases, it may also be haram for one to fast if one knows that he will suffer any sort of pains or what have you, deteriorating of his uh, condition. Just as a mental note, Islam came to clear up the brighter picture and to change society to the better and move the Muslims and anyone who was of the like, for example, Ahl al those who lived amongst the Muslims in the Islamic land, out of the darkness into the light. When one is unable to fast for a shari'i reason, for a reason which is purposeful, which is uh, legal, which is jurisprudential, jurisprudentially okay for him not to fast, when one is not fasting, he shouldn't flaunt the fact that he's not fasting. He or she is not fasting. For example, if I was traveling and it, I was unable to fast, I came, I reached my home or my city after Salat al-Dhuhr, for example, I shouldn't go buy an ice cream and eat on the street. I should hide the fact that I'm not fasting. Why? So that the general picture of the Muslim community is a fasting picture. Because if every single one of us who had a reason I'm not talking about those who don't have reasons, who just break their fasts for the sake of it. I'm saying even the brothers and sisters who break their fasts with the right reasons and intentions, if they were to eat and drink in public, for example, that would be a reason for others to eat and drink and break their fast in public. And then slowly, slowly, the entire society would look like a non-fasting society. And fasting was something um, done as a precaution or something that was done out of mustahab, recommended. It was no longer something wajib. It loses its its face value. That was just on a mental note. Um, Insha'Allah, uh, we will continue our discussion in the coming episodes, Insha'Allah, on the intentions of fasting and the, the things and the aspects that break one's fast. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.